cell phone is very great, but these things are more or less very primitive for us. Our technologies, even the the computers, they're relatively pr primitive. But um, think about if you had a screwdriver that you know had molecular independence via a um, a gravity time gravity time engine whatever you want to call it and it's able to literally turn into a screwdriver and then it's like oh like and you're like okay um hammer and it turns into a hammer all right let me get a a saber you know so hello and welcome to this episode the science of time travel um, a discussion on theories of time travel time machines and um, time itself let's get into it to jump off I figured I would just um, type in what are some of the most popular theories of time travel because I could go in on this in, in a bunch of different ways um, and I'll start with before I read any of these um, one thing I've been thinking a lot about is people using the phraseology backward in time, forward in time. Right now, what I'm thinking a lot about is there's no backward in time. There is no backward in time. If anything, maybe an unwinding, um, but even that I think would be entirely impossible without the ability to create the universe itself because that's what you would have to do I, I believe um, now I think there are various experiences of time travel that may be possible today even and into the far distant future let's go ahead and start with um, some some whatever Google says. So the first thing Google says is time travel in physics. Some theories from Wikipedia. Some theories, most notably special and general relativity, suggest that suitable geometries of space-time or specific types of motion in space might allow time travel into the past, future, if these geometries or motions were possible. Great. I think that's appropriately vague. And um. Special and general relativity. That's the real science that people are doing right now. So let's go into space.com. Let's see what space.com has to say about time travel. Time travel, moving between different points in time. Different points in time has been a popular topic for science fiction um, for decades. Franchises ranging from Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. Star Trek. I like the new Star Trek's Back to the Future. Liked it back when they first made it. I don't like old stuff, so there's no new for Back to the Future. So, um, have seen humans get in a vehicle of some sort and travel in the past or future. Let's talk about that for a second. A vehicle. What would a time machine look like? That's very interesting. You think about a car. Um, a car has kind of two components to it the part that allows it to travel on space without being destroyed um, which is the power and the chases as it were and then the cabin the part that keeps you one connected to that ability and keeps you from getting attacked by the um, adverse effects of super human greater than human abilities which is to move at you know 40 to 60 miles an hour consistently for five hours that wind was hitting you in the face even if you weren't you know getting dragged or something anyway so obviously we understand what um, um, what those things can be for I'm gonna pause this really fast and take this call. okay so um, let, let's get back into it let's get back into it. I just had some fun I was talking about a whole bunch of stuff but um let's go back um, interest. So this is the uh, it's the Wikipedia page. Let's see what space.com. We were reading a little bit about that. Oh, vehicles. We were talking about time machines, I believe. 
Not all scientists believe that time travel is possible. This is one, one um, independent scientist that definitely does not believe that um, time travel is possible, but aspects of it, as I said, experiences of it, I think, <clears throat> most definitely could be created. Um, so that was space.com time travel. Let's see what else uh, Wikipedia says. Time travel is a widely recognized concept in philosophy and fiction. Um, it is uncertain if time travel to the past is physically possible. It's interesting. I love to hear how different people and different entities discuss time travel because I think we learn a lot about it there. But um, let's go through some more theories. According to current physical theory, is it possible for a human to being to travel in time? As several respondents noted, we constantly travel through time, just forward and all at the same rate. But seriously, time travel is more uh, but seriously, time travel is more than mere fantasy, as noted by Gary T. Horowitz, a professor of uh, physics at the University of Santa Barbara. Hmm. Let's see, is it possible to travel through time? To answer this question, we must be a bit more specific. Is it possible within a short time, less than a human life, to travel into the distant future? Okay. Our current understanding of physics says answer to the first question is yes, and the second maybe. Hmm. The mechanism for traveling to the distant future is to use time dilation effect, special to it, which states that moving back, moving the clock appears to take uh, more slowly as it approaches the speed of light, the effect. So this is mostly theoretical. They're scaling up um, aspects of science. Um, they're basically saying that Um, that a clock, so, oh, the idea that if you move at light speed, you can slow down time. It's interesting. Um, it's fascinating. I think that's, that's a cool thing that is a lot discussed, but it's so abstract, really, the science of it, um, that it, so... In that case, if we're talking about time machines, you would need something that could protect you from moving at light speed, which is interesting. And then it would also have to be moving at light speed, um, which is also interesting. And then I think it, it really begs into the question the, this relativity and what that really says about what we're talking about. Because if you are moving slow in time relative to somebody else, does that really matter? Um, does that mean anything about how you yourself are moving through time? I don't think so. I think the clock of our consciousness and um, the clock of most of the things we do kind of stays pretty steady, no matter what. Let's go into something else. Space.com says we all travel in time. We travel one year in time between birthdays, and we're all traveling in time at approximately the same speed, one second per second. There you go. So you're already time traveling. That's cool. Um, so such a trip would... Oh, Scientific American. I was going to read more of theirs, but let's see what else this is. Time travel into the past, which is what most people usually mean by time travel, is a much more uncertain for our position. There are so many solutions to Einstein's equations of general relativity that allow a person to follow to follow a timeline that would result in him or her encountering herself or her grandmother at an earlier time. The problem is deciding whether these solutions represent situations that could occur in the real universe or whether they are mere mathematical. Let's keep going. Let's assume that they are mathematical oddities until someone does something else with those. I'd love to see a couple fictional ones. Stephen Hawking's final book suggests that time travel may one day be possible. One, may one day be possible. Light speed, okay, wormholes, fascinating, saving history. So my thing on wormholes is um, it's fascinating. 
<clears throat> do I think that there would be a way for a wormhole to interact with our own timelines? See, I think to, to look at it like that is already kind of a mistake of time travel. To, to really realize things, I think you have to realize that time is more or less irrelevant and only has meaning um, relative to something else that we're engaging in, which is the decisions that we make. Because... You know, if you're talking about three-dimensional objects, they could as well not be experiencing time as far as our consciousness is really concerned, even though, you know, they're doing things that have nothing to do with us. Um, objects, just their molecules are, are going at it. They're moving. They're not staying still. Um, but I think to say that there is a place where the growth that has occurred because that's what we don't really talk about you know things are growing um and i think that is a unique thing and we're not really talking about where and how that inner energy is interacting with the universe and why things where things are blooming from um that's why even the notion of forward in time is again a misnomer you can't really use things but I think if you look at forward in the human aspirational sense then you get a little bit of something so do I think that there is a rewinding no um, I think that there are technologies which can untangle records of certain clarity but stop there we're, we're having fun let's keep moving saving history so is time travel really a possibility our current understanding can't rule it out but the answer is probably no okay well they're just agreeing with me so let's see time travel stanford encyclopedia of philosophy time travel Scientist Ron Millet. I've heard about him before. Let's go ahead and I don't remember what his thing was. Oh, yes. So he was going to build a time machine by, I believe, making like light go in a circle by making some kind of wormhole go in a circle. I think um, probably the most fascinating application of maybe a time engine would be to take advantage of spin in a more mechanical and scaled down way in order to create gravitational fluctuations, which could allow us to do a lot more spatially. Um, you know, time engines could um, power um, something that really allowed the 5G of all things to actually mean something more than um, better remote controls or something like that, or, or you know, clear, clear this. Uh, you know, the the data increase is great, but on the mechanical end, we're really, you know, there's a lot to fascinating things. And what I mean by that is, so movement right now, um, just to talk about things in a certain kind of way, it's interesting how, and I love feedback, so draw feedback, but if you look at, you know, a car, you know, we know how to generate um, force, and then we know how to convert it, you know, take it from being I don't even know, maybe circular to linear, however they're doing it in a car, they're converting the direction of energy, but it's still very limited, right? But there's there's a few things with spin as far as being able to manipulate three-dimensional things, because if you could do that, 
You could ostensibly say, hey, take my room back to how it was three hours ago. And that would be very cool. Um, if you if you were able to do, if everything, for instance, had like, let's say this had, um, it was built with an engine around it, which had, instead of just one shape, um, the gravitational engine inside of it was able to create a, um, a sort of sustainable gravity field that all of the molecules that it was controlling, that it was connected to, were um, controlled by. Then, you know, this it could react, we could bend it, and then it could also, um, you know, through different types of programming, do different things. Think about literally having a device, because we think about apps on a cell phone is very great, but these things are more or less very primitive for us, our technologies, even the, the computers, they're relatively pr primitive. But um, think about if you had a screwdriver that, you know, had molecular independence via a, um, a gravity time, time, gravity time engine, whatever you want to call it, and it's able to literally turn into a screwdriver, and then it's like, oh, like, and you're like, okay, um, hammer, and it turns into a hammer. All right, let me get a, a saber, you know, so, and of course, all those things would be pre-designed, stored in it, so it's not creating anything, it's not magic, it's literally just, you know, the thing. So anyway, um, how to become a time traveler, okay. It's very fascinating. I have lots of other theories about time travel, including media. You know, I think that um, in lots of ways we time travel all the time using our memories and, and uh, doing different things. And time machine, you know, one of the most practical elements in this day and age is looking at your media company. And this is getting into a different thing, your media, and then, which is why I have my media company time machine. But anyway. Let's not get into that, because that's not science. That's boring stuff. So there is an extensive literature on time travel in both philosophy and physics. There's an extensive, there's an extensive literature. I'm not sure if that grammar is correct. Let's jump through this. Time travel, doctor. What is time travel? I don't know, it just says, this must be a, is this Stanford? Doctor, Doctor Who steps into the time machine 2024. Okay, leap. Uh, the time traveler takes hold of a special device, like a time machine, and suddenly leaps. Okay, so it's giving you like a broad thing. Puntum, Oscar Smith steps into the time machine 2024. From his point of view, things proceed much as in the Doctor. Okay, Goodell, the time traveler steps into an ordinary rocket ship, not a special, flies off into a certain course, okay. Einstein, the time traveler, steps into an ordinary rocket. Ship flies, ship flies off at high speed on a round trip. When he returns to Earth, thanks to certain effects predicted by special. Oh, I see. So these are what time travel theories based off of. Um, these different. Um, artistic shows or, or anything like that. Very cool. Oh, and then it even goes into things that are not time travel. Saying sleep is not time travel, but it allows you to time travel in time. See, so that's also a very interesting thing. Why isn't sleep considered time travel? I think it's not, I think it is kind of time travel. You're, you're passing through the fifth dimension and you're coming back into your consciousness anyway. Sleep is definitely time travel. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say definitely, but I will pose that as one um, hypothesis that sleep is a um, is a time travel for your consciousness. Okay, so I think we we covered some different stuff today, and I hope um, that gives me an idea for what to talk about next time. Uh, and I hope that some of you guys will drop some comments and we can get some other topics and we can continue this, um, the science of time travel. 
and we can talk about, um, we can discuss more theories of time machines and time itself. So thank you for watching. Enjoy yourselves. Goodbye.